I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Living in the riches of my Lord and King, I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Committed to Him in everything I do, believe He'll come again. And I know one thing I'm gonna do till then is learn to live in the blessing of Abraham. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Covenant Living Broadcast. I'm David Weeder, and I'm so thrilled that you're here with us today. Praise God. Hey, uh, go make that cup of coffee. Pull up the chair to the table. Get your Bible and notebook. We're going to have a good time today. We're going to do something a little different today. I had, oh, what an honor. I had the opportunity and ability to teach at Kenneth Copeland Bible College at one of their chapels. And uh, it was such a rich time, and the Lord gave me just a, a, a perfect message uh, for that group of people. But I want to give you a little background as we, as we go into this teaching. <laughs> Whoo, man. Uh, they, they had asked me about a song, if I had any particular songs that I wanted. And so I told them I'd like to hear a, a song that was, um, it was written uh, a long time ago, and it's called Give Me the Word. And I had no idea that the Lord was setting me up for this, what, what you'll see at the beginning of this message, but the Word, the Word of God is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, and it will divide even to the spirit and the soul and the joints and the marrow, praise God. Let's look real quick at Proverbs chapter 4. And we'll see just a little bit about how important it is. Chapter 4 in Proverbs, verse 20. My son, attend to my word. Incline your ear unto my sayings, my word. Let them, what? Them word. <laughs> Let the word not depart from your eyes. Keep the word in the midst of your heart. For the word is life unto those that find it and is health to all their flesh. The word, the word, the longest chapter in the Bible, in Psalms, every verse almost, David's talking about the word, the word, the word. Praise God. The word is what we have to have, and it will bring us to victory in every area of life. Now, don't go anywhere. You're going to enjoy today's message. I want to talk to you today primarily about something that, first of all, what are we, two weeks and two days from graduation? Okay, I thought there must be a count. There's probably a countdown going on. I knew I could look over here and he'd give me the hours because, you know, don't get in his way. He's going to run over you on the way out. So, so how, many, how many of you are graduating? Praise God. Good job. Of those who are graduating, how many are going into full time ministry? in the five-fold, one of the five-fold ministry offices. Okay, okay, all right. This message today is, I guess you could say, a little more emphasis towards ministers who are going into five-fold ministry, but at the same time, it's for every single one of us. And... I'm not going to be telling you something that you haven't heard, but we may be discussing it in a little different light. So we may be looking at something a little bit differently, and the approach may be a little different. We're going to, I'm going to read quite a few scriptures. Any of you from a Baptist background? Remember sword drill? Okay, just limber up the fingers now, because we're going to be looking at... Quite a few scriptures back to back because I want to lay a solid foundation and then I'm just going to share my, with, from my heart about them and what that looks like in real life. I'm so glad that, that uh, Dean, President, no Dean, Dean, everything. <laughs> yeah. 
you're the we of KCBC. <laughs> when we're going to do this and we're going to do that, you, you're the we. Uh, I'm so glad he brought that up from our website about real because if this, now today you're going to have to listen to what I say, not what you think I say. Okay? If this doesn't work in real life, if this doesn't work in the middle of a war in Ukraine, if this doesn't work in an ICU at a hospital, if this doesn't work in the projects, it's not worth the paper it's written on. Criminals love Bibles. You know why? Makes great paper for rolling cigarettes. We're going to be real, right? But they don't know, they haven't been presented that, yeah, it'll work right there in the middle of the biker gang. On the other hand, you take an anointed man of God who's called to deliver the word to the biker world, and he'll walk in the middle of that because we have a very, very, very close friend that did exactly this. He'll walk in the middle of all kinds of manifestations of hell going on around him and preach the name of Jesus. And someone came up to him with a shot off shotgun, stuck it in his face. You say that name again, and I'll blow your head off. And the word came alive, and he realized that about 0.1 seconds from now, he could be looking directly into the face of Jesus. And he got excited. And he said, by God, man, pull the trigger. Pull the trigger, bless God, I'll see my Jesus. And the man dropped the gun. He backed away. He said, my God, I didn't know it was real. Forgive me, I didn't know it was real. This will work in the middle of wherever you got guts and faith enough to take it. Glory to God. All right. This is my introduction. <laughs> you do know who my spiritual father is, don't you? <laughs> I could start closing now and we'll still be, anyway. I want to give you a safety net and a accelerant for after you get out of the, forgive me, Dwayne, but it just happens everywhere, the KCBC bubble. Okay? Now, I don't particularly like this term, but most people immediately relate to it. And then I looked up the definition. I really like the definition. How many of you know what a life hack is? The term, you're familiar with the term? I don't like that term. It sounds like you're like hacking up a hairball or something. I mean, it's, <laughs> I just don't like the way it sounds. But listen to the definitions. One definition is any procedure or action that solves a problem simplifies a task, reduces frustration oh, uh -huh, in one's everyday life. Another definition, any trick, shortcut, skill, or novelty method that increases productivity and efficiency. Yes. Look, you get out of here, you want some acceleration of productivity and efficiency. Our time is short on this earth. Now listen to Webster's Dictionary definition. Usually a simple and clever tip or technique for accomplishing some familiar task more easily and efficiently. 
So how many of you would like less struggles, less frustrations, and to be able to accomplish ministry more easily, efficiently, and more productively? Now, like I said, it's nothing new. Listen to this. Webster's includes a quote from somebody about life hacks. It says, life hacks are all about eliminating life's manifold frustrations in simple and deliciously clever ways. The best involve tricks that are free, efficient, and get this, stunningly obvious in retrospect. Okay? I'm not going to talk to you about a thing you don't know about it, but like I said, we're going to be maybe looking at it a little different than you thought about before. Turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 19. Now, with the Lord's help, I'm going to try to go through most of these scriptures without too much teaching and commentary. And the Lord's going to have to help me because I have a habit of taking off on things. First Kings 1919. 19. So he, Elijah, departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shephat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelfth. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and mother, and then I will, what? Follow, Follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back, for what have I done to thee? That one translation actually says, Think about what I have done to thee. I want to talk to you this principle, and I talked to our resident Hebrew expert, Professor Greg Stevens, and I talked to him about this, present, this principle. And he said the, this, is, this is what's known as wearing the dust of the rabbis. It is following their rabbi so closely that the dust from his walking comes up and just they wear it because they stay so close. Now turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. Let's look at the New Testament here. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 says, Be you therefore, what? Followers. Followers, follow, right? Be you therefore followers of God as dear children. Now, I know you've heard this, but I'm going to say it again. That word followers means imitator. It actually comes from the word that we get mimic. Be you imitators of God as dear children. But how many of you know that chapter 4 become, comes before chapter 5? So let's go back and look at chapter 4 and see how the Lord's orchestrated for this to happen. Okay? Ephesians 4 1. Therefore, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Okay, now we could, we could, you could teach a semester on that verse. Walking worthy of the vocation to which you are called. Talk about a mouthful. So I'm not going to dwell on this. Like I said, I want to read, but I do have to point out one thing. That, that, that word walk, if you look that up, it actually means walk all around in. Just take ownership of it. It also means to live. This is the way you're supposed to live. You live in a manner that you're worthy of your vocation. And that word vocation is literally calling. That's what it means. So you want to live in a manner that's worthy of your calling with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. Are we talking about being called and callings again? One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. I've got to hold on to the podium here. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he says, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. 
Now that he ascended, what is it but he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all things, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints. What for? For the, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. So we're supposed to not be children anymore. We're supposed to grow up. We're supposed to learn these things. We're supposed to mature so that we can become followers and imitators of God. And how are we supposed to do it? He gave us the five-fold ministry gifts to show us the way. Now, a lot of people, I'm going I'm to deal with something here real quick. First, go turn over to 1 John. I told you to limber those fingers up. 1 John chapter 2. A lot of people, particularly those that don't like accountability, like to go straight to this verse right here. Verse 27 of 1 John chapter 2. But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you, and you need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you of all things and is truth and is no lie, even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. See there, Brother David, bless God, I don't need no man teach me, bless God. <laughs> well, there's one verse right before that. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Let me read this to you out of the Passion Translation, and particularly a footnote in the Passion Translation. 1 John chapter 2. Come on, technology, flip over there. Okay, here we go. Okay. Verse 20, starting in verse 26 with the Passion Translation. I have written these things about those who are attempting to lead you astray. But the wonderful anointing you have received from God is so much greater than their deception and now lives in you. There's no need for anyone to keep teaching you. His anointing teaches you all that you need to know, for it will lead you into truth, not a counterfeit. So just as the anointing is taught, you remain in him. Now, there's a footnote right here that says, Or there is no need for anyone to keep teaching you his deception, his opinions. John is not telling them to continue to be taught, is not telling them not to continue to be taught the word of God. For God has placed teachers in the church to instruct us and equip us and bring us into the fullness of Christ. John's warning concerns those who lead us astray by the false doctrines of men. The bride of Christ will always need Holy Spirit-filled teachers who will illuminate us in the ways of Christ. So while I appreciate the fervor to which people refer to, I don't need no man to teach me, it is fervent error. You can be sincere and sincerely wrong. At the same time. So, now that we've settled that once and for all, for all of eternity, look at 1 Corinthians 4. Hang on with me. I'm going somewhere with this now. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, and I'm going to start in verse 15. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ... Yet have you not many fathers? 
For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be you followers, imitators of God. Oh, wait a minute. That's not what this says. Wherefore I beseech you, be imitators of me. Hmm. Turn over to chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Be you followers or imitators of, huh, Paul said me, even as I also am of Christ. Huh, that's a pretty bold statement. Can you imagine a minister up, standing up today in a pulpit like right here or on TV or whatever and say, hey, y'all, follow me. You think you get a little mail? All right. Now turn over to Philippians 3.17. Philippians chapter 3, verse 17. Brethren, be you followers, imitators, together of me. And mark them which walk so as you have us for an ensample or for an example. Now hold your place right there because we're going to come back here real close to that. But turn over to Hebrews chapter 6. But hold your place there in, in Philippians. Hebrews chapter 6. Starting in verse 9. But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you. And things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and your labor of love, which you have showed towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. I'm going to read that to you in the Amplified Classic Version. Hebrews chapter 6. Verse 9, Even though we speak this way, yet in your case, beloved, are we now firmly convinced of better things that are near to salvation and accompany it? For God is not unrighteous to forget or overlook your labor and the love which you have shown for his name's sake in ministering to the needs of his saints. Praise God. His own consecrated people, as you still do. But we do strongly and earnestly desire for each of you to show the same diligence and sincerity all the way through in realizing and enjoying the full assurance and development of your hope until the end, in order that you might not grow disinterested and become spiritual sluggers, but imitators, behaving as do those who through faith by their leaning of their entire personality on God in Christ, in absolute trust and confidence in His power and wisdom and goodness, and by practice of patient endurance and waiting are now inheriting the promises. Imitators of those who walk by faith. Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Weeder, and uh, you just heard an amazing message of faith, uh, an amazing message on the Word, but when you really get down to it, it's an amazing message about Jesus. And really, that's what all of this is about, is Jesus. You know, He is love, He's provision, and He wants a family. He wants you, you, <laughs> as a part of the family. You know, it says in Romans, Romans 5, that while we were yet sinners, Jesus came to this earth. Jesus, perfection Himself, came to this earth while you were a sinner, while you were on death row. The Bible says in, in Romans 6 that the wages of sin is death. You were a sinner. You were on death row. And Jesus showed up, set you free, and took your place because He wanted you as a part of the family. He wanted you as His son or His daughter. He loves you more than anyone else ever possibly could. 
And if you want to be a part of that family, have that perfect, loving Father, I would love to offer you this opportunity to pray and receive Him into your heart. Accept that adoption. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And that's what we're going to do. Believe with our hearts, confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus, just like it says. And if you're ready, just repeat after me in prayer. Father, I come before you, believing with my heart and confessing with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for sending him to this earth, paying the price for my salvation. I receive it and accept my adoption into the family. I thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I know that you love me. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen and amen. Welcome into the family. Glad to have you here. <laughs> and now that you are born again, you can really truly say what my dad says. What we always say at the end of the broadcast, and please say it with me. Jesus is Lord. Hey, none no, 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 of the rest of this even matters if you haven't made Jesus the Lord of your life. But I know you just did because you just prayed that prayer with Ryan, and I am so thrilled that you did. Hey, let us know. Jump on our website, davidweeder.org. Hit the contact button. Send us an email. Call the 800 number that's on there. Praise God. Let us know that you just got born again, and we will rejoice with you. We will tell you some next steps that you can take and make things richer. Oh, it's, it, now, now, now <laughs> is when you can start doing the things that we talked about in today, that I talked about in today's message, and that we're going to talk about a lot more of in next week's message. Now, there may be some things towards the end of this message you weren't all that sure about. Hey, 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 hang on with me now. Don't don't get all upset. You got to you got to listen to next week's message where we tie it all together. You understand me? All right. So that's what you that's what you need to do is I tell you what, you've got a starting place. Now what we're gonna talk about is a cheat sheet to help you make that jump. You're born again. Now how do you live this way? That's what we're gonna be talking about next week. Praise God. Hey, don't forget I love you. God loves you. He's always for you, He's never against you. And Jesus is Lord. Thank you, partners and friends, for helping make this broadcast possible. For more information about our ministry, contact us at davidweeder.org or call us at 1-800-988-5380. Join us again next time on the Covenant Living Broadcast.